Welcome, viewers, to our ongoing program, Focus, coming to you from Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy, here in Burlington, Vermont. I'm your host, Margaret Harrington, and I have a wonderful guest here, Lee Terhun, who is an artist and activist in the city of Burlington, Vermont. And the title of our program today is The Everyone Loves a Parade Mural Ignored by Burlington City Council. And Lee, we can bring viewers up to date on what is going on with, this, with the mural resolution. And we both attended a, a park uh, committee meeting, a, a parks and recreation committee meeting at Contus Auditorium at City Hall in the past two weeks. And what was your takeaway from that? And I'm going to jump in here now. And my takeaway was that the, it's time because none of the, no part of the resolution has been honored, that it's time for the city council to vote to take it down and store it away. So Lee, take it from there and tell me now what was your impression and takeaway from the resolution? Well, first of all, I couldn't agree with you more that the mural should not have been allowed to remain in that place. And the forming of a mural task force with people selected for that task force to be compliant with the city's desire to keep it up five more years because they were willing to place monetary concerns. I mean, a, a woman on the task force testified that she used her marketing budget and she expected, she, but interesting, she said she expected five years. And why the task force dealt with a time frame of 10 years, I don't know, because what this woman testified was that she used five years worth of her marketing budget to be on that billboard. And she, ex she expected the city to honor that. Well, five years is gone. And so um, it, it should be taken down. It, but in my mind, it should be taken down because it does harm. It does harm to the diverse community that we're part of. It does harm to children. Often schools bring children down to look at the mural. It does harm, and it should be removed for that reason. Lee, could you go into more detail about the harm that it does? Because we saw this revealed during the task force, yes. and and we have a, a video that we we took we took here on Channel 17. Burlington did not listen about the the report of the task force mm -hmm. and all, of all the hundreds of people mm -hmm. who signed petitions and who came forward to the city council to testify. And this this is going back to 2017 when when it was when off the wall did write off the wall on the plaque in mm -hmm. front of the of the mural. And so can you go into more detail about the harm mm -hmm. that it continues to be done yeah. by that mural? This harm was testified to city council as well as to the mural task force. I believe there was one person besides the donor who was on the task, a member of the task force. I think there was one person who came before the task force and said that the mural should stay up, should, that it should stay in place. Everyone else who testified and testified articulately on the subject of white supremacy, on the idea that that mural says only white lives matter. And people spoke eloquently to that and they were discounted by the mural task force and by city council. Um, the person who moved me the most was Vicki Garrison, whose family is a longtime Burlington family. She was born here. She grew up here. Her mother was one of the founders of the King Street Center. Um, she explained tearfully to city council and later to the mural task force the harm that this does to her, to see her community represented in a form where only white lives matter. And the reaction of the city council mm -hmm. was, was what? Yeah. It, 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 was, yeah. it, it has come to this, that we attended this last yeah. meeting. We can show some video from the, the park committee meeting. And it seems to go over their yeah. heads. And, and yeah. they, they're not registering the pain that people feel yeah. about this mural. Yeah. It's a comment first, and I think I was very disappointed by all the members of the administration that was 
start to take action on this day. None of them has taken any action. And to remind you that this resolution was passed in October 2018. October 2018 to March is over around six months. In those six months, one you said you did not remember that if you had to do that, and now you're telling me people's words. And six months. I'm not saying because I'm busy enough, there's a sequence to the way things happen. I think I think what I'm telling you is all facts. It's all facts. You told me that before, and now you have another reason to say it's because your staff capacity was too much. Okay. Um, it seemed to me that, you know, with this issue, people are really out of their place. People are doing what they want, and I think everything that we do since this resolution has been passed and adopted should be around. This is a policy. This is not something we can just create and leave it alone. I think we should not think about any part of public art until what was tasked to be done is done. <coughs> so that's what I think. Um, I, I felt a small part of what Vicki must have felt when at the Parks, Arts and Recreation Committee meeting that you just referred to, I stood before them and spoke with them about the harm. Uh, a gentleman had spoken before me and said this is a First Amendment rights issue. And I replied that the um, First Amendment rights allow, you cannot cry fire in a crowded theater because it could do harm. And for the same reason, the, this is not First Amendment rights with this piece of artwork um, because it harms children. It harms, it harms white people. It harms us because white supremacy is the culture of Burlington, of Vermont, of this country in a large amount. And it's up to white people who have constructed this social situation. It's up to us to remove it. And you have also brought to the studio photographs of the mural yeah. showing how this yeah. is. is. Um, but I want to finish one thought. I, I got sidetracked a bit. Um, at the Parks, Arts, and Culture meeting, and I was standing up there, and before me were white council members, as well as one person of color on council. And there were the city staff to my left and the white councilors to my right. And as I looked at their faces, their faces were absolutely blank. And I, and I saw those white, uncomprehending faces. And it gave me just a touch of what a person of color in my place would have felt like. No, this is not a battle for people of color. This is, we've, we, const we constructed this mural, we commissioned it, and the whole thing about First Amendment rights is absolutely ridiculous. Once that artist was fraudulently obtained a visa by swearing that he was a trompe loy artist, which he himself in his own words in writing said he is not, but they got Senator Leahy to intercede. The, they first turned him down because that was an absolutely ridiculous claim that there was no artist in the United States or in Burlington or in Vermont that could paint this mural. We have many muralists in Burlington. Um, yeah, immigration said that's ridiculous and turned him down. So the city went to Pat Leahy and got him to intercede for them. And then didn't they rename the alleyway, Leahy way. <laughs> That's the way things go. Um, anyway, the, um, well, I'll, I could go on and well, on. Well, let's go into the resolution now about uh, that we can show on screen yep. also. And that uh, our point is that nothing was honored in the resolution. Right. right. Um, the first thing I noticed, because I, I was not here and couldn't attend the Merrill Task Force meetings, but there are audio tapes. And I learned from Channel 17 that there are also some videotapes of those meetings, but I listened to all of the audio tapes. It was painful, Margaret. Mm. It was painful to be part of that 
and not be there and see what was happening and see the, the mousy silence of the few people on that task force who we could have expected to speak up. Somebody from Peace and Justice Center, um, another artist who started out, she got it in the beginning, but she went silent for reasons that I may be able to bring up later. Um, but at any rate, the, in the mural task force, they had a, a resolution that's talked about that the mural fails to convey an inclusive and welcoming message that the city seeks to project, fails to adequately acknowledge Vermont's diverse history, undermines our efforts to promote Burlington as a diverse, welcoming place to live, work, and visit, whereas many individuals feel hurt by the omissions and misrepresentations in the mural, that was not reiterated to the mural task force. What was reiterated at the beginning of every meeting was the, the, resol the resolution which refers to uh, the mayor charges the task force while respecting the principles of public art, property rights, artist rights, and limits on government power to review and consider a wide range of options that lead to a more inclusive outcome respects Burlington's history, educates our residents. That's all they got. They didn't get the portion of the resolution which addresses what I feel are the most significant issues surrounding that mural. Essentially for me, the big one is the harm that it does to people. It does it to people of color by telling them they don't belong. It does it to, to white people by telling them that they have the arrogant position of supremacy over other cultures, over other people's color of skin. I mean, there are examples in this mural that there's one that's particularly offensive to me. It, um, I have a photograph of a child, a brown-skinned child, and that child is leaning up against the Native American in the mural. And I'm a teacher, I'm a social worker, as well as these other things. I'm retired now, and so I get to dabble in art. But um, the, this child is, the body language of this child is he sees an adult that he identifies with. He sees that person being humiliated. And he's leaning against it in a way that a child will do when they're defending a parent who's being harmed. Mm. I've seen this, I've, I've, I've seen it, and I see it in this child in this picture. And every time I look at that picture, my heart is engaged mm. in this. Mm. Um, there's another picture of Senator Leahy with two children who are brown skinned, and they're standing in front of the mural of all these white people around them. Oh. I see it here. Yeah. If you zoom in on the faces of those children, the girl who's older, she's just got a look on her face like, oh yeah, uh-huh. But the boy is hurt and angry. You look at his face, you know what that face says on a child. Mm -hmm. And that's another photograph that I see. Um, you'll notice they like to say that this mural has, um, all people from Burlington notables. They're the, these people are the notables of Burlington. Well, the guy in the red jacket on the right, it's Billy Kidd, and he lives in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. He got out of Vermont pretty early in the game. He's, been, he's quite well known, and he is definitely a notable in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, but not in Burlington, Vermont. And we can think also, Lee, of all the thousands of children who have been brought there yeah. over the years since 2012 when yeah. it was put up to, to learn about yeah. Vermont history and yeah. Burlington history. And this is what they are being exposed yeah. to. It's totally fake. That, that um, scene of Champlain with this sub submissive little Native American. In his own journals, Samuel D. Champlain talks about how the respect he had for the native people, how smart they were, how resourceful, and he he used them, but he they had a reciprocal arrangement. He needed to take furs back to Europe to finance his trip and to satisfy the people that sponsored his trips to the New World, 
And so he got those furs from the native people. And in return, he gave them knives, for example, made out of steel, gunpowder, fabrics, glass, things that they needed. And so the reciprocal agreement between them was quite amicable and, and one of mutual respect. Mm -hmm. But however, they were colonialists and that was the, la the last uh, uh, besmirching of this mural that went up on, mm -hmm. on it a, a year ago, yeah. colonialists. Yeah. And, uh, that, that, yeah. that is definitely uh, in, it portrays the colonial relationship between the, the small subservient native person and the big larger than life. I mean, in art, the, um, the big leader is always larger than life and they present it with him stepping forward, but the visual image there is clear. Mm -hmm. And any child of color in our community sees that and a picture is worth a thousand words. That portrayal tells that child what their place is. Mm -hmm. And among the Abenaki people, um, they let this slide. Um, they had bigger fish to fry. Um, they agreed not to object in return for getting some benefits from the city. Um, I'm told they got display space at the airport, perhaps, mm -hmm. and were able to put up a table on Church Street to, to hand out their um, literature. Um, I respect that. I don't expect them to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. This is something that white people in this community have done. They've constructed it. They've defended it. They have allowed it to appear in our marketplace, totally erasing and rendering invisible the diversity of our community, the diversity of our country, the diversity of Vermont history. And the thing that aggravates me no end is people who say, uh, well, we are the whitest state. <laughs> yes, we are, because the diseases that the Europeans brought decimated up to 90% of the native people. And in, in Vermont, white people, I mean, people of color aren't that welcome here. That mural says it. Um, I had dinner one night with a, uh, a gentleman, a friend of my of family, a Wall Street banker who was bringing his daughter to school here. And somebody said, oh, you know, Lee's, Lee lives in Vermont. You gotta get in touch with her and he invited me out to dinner. And they told me at that dinner, this would have been in the 80s, that they chose UVM because it's white and Burlington's white and they wanted their daughter in a white place. Listen, Burlington and UVM trade on that brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just not true. It wasn't true when Champlain came here for sure. And Abenaki people went underground. They're fairly light skinned and many of them can pass. They went underground. The eugenics movement, I mean, if you declared yourself a Native American during the eugenics movement, Women were sterilized. I know an Abenaki woman who was sterilized without her permission. She did not find out about it until after it was done. And it was because she was Abenaki and she was poor. And viewers, this is all the hidden history of the mural. We have, we have the mural up there being deflected from by by all by, by the, the outcome of the mural task force. They said, that we should have uh, other murals, et cetera. Could you, could you address that, Lee? Because that's very relevant to the meeting that we went to, how, uh, how they managed with the testimony of Doreen Kraft, who is the head of Burlington City Arts. And she was there mainly uh, talking to uh, uh, Councilman Ally Jeng's questions about why the, why nothing has been done mm -hmm. about the resolution. Mm -hmm. so. Well, she's an interesting case. She distanced herself from this, tries to distance herself from it. And yet when you listen to the testimony of the people who were working on the mural when it was being painted, Burlington City Arts was very much involved. Burlington City Arts ran the mural task force and Burlington City Arts was, was given charged with the responsibility of carrying out the recommendations of the mural task force. 
as you just alluded to, none of those things were done. The resolution was just completely ignored. I believe that uh, Doreen Kraft at one point said that she, that she didn't know it, or Joan Shannon said, yeah, we probably didn't give you the right, the, those were amendments that were added later, and maybe you didn't see that. And, well, and Lee, that had to do with the time that the plaque, the placard, should be revised. Is that yeah, so? Yeah. yeah. The, the resolution which calls for and sets exact dates by which these tasks much be, must be fulfilled. The, the resolution says, as all resolutions are required to attach something that says, from the city clerk, the voting and records coordinator, I hereby certify that this resolution has been sent to the following departments. Lisa Blanchard, City Attorney Office, BCA. And so Burlington City Arts got a copy of this resolution. How they justify that they completely ignored it, Doreen Kraft told the Parks, Arts, and Culture meeting uh, committee last week that she was busy, that she was too busy doing other things, and that she had graciously agreed to take on this task of fulfilling the recommendations from the mural task force. Um, but uh, she was too busy. And it isn't, this, this isn't like it's overdue by a couple of months. The first date was in January of 2018. They were to submit a report on the progress that they'd made in finding out what it would take to move the mural. And by March, and by, in March, they were supposed to have replaced the plaque. That was is in 2019, in this year. Yes. The, the plaque Two, yes. should have been replaced over six months ago. Yes. And nothing has and been done And the report about should have been made nine months ago, and they yeah. did the report last week. And as far as I can see, it wasn't a written report. It was just Doreen Kraft sat there and, and made her excuses to Ali Diang, Councillor Diang, about why None of, the, none of these tasks had been followed up on. Mm. And um, it was because, generally it was because she was so busy. Even though she has hired, <laughs> hired one of the members of the task force, gave her a job to work on, to be in charge of the restoration of the mural. That's pretty quo, quo to me. Not only did she give this person a job, but then on top of that, gave her a $3,000 grant to do one of her own projects. Mm -hmm. And by the way, also gave a $3,000 grant to a young man who's doing a documentary on the history of the mural, who has not interviewed any of the people who testified before the mural task force or before city council or in the public realm as to why the mural needs to be removed, why only white lives matter is a, a lesson of enforcing white supremacy in a community by putting down people who aren't white or don't identify as white. This is just amazing how you capsulize it, Lee, and how the outcome of that. It's a part, Parks and Arts Recreation Committee? Is that Parks, it? Arts, and Culture, uh, uh, um, P-A-R-C, Parts, Art, Recreation, Parts, Arts, Recreation, and Culture or Committee. Um, <laughs> and uh, Councilor Tiang said to the person chairing this, who was the, the council president, Shannon, she was chairing it. She was sitting next to Councilor Tiang. And he, he was questioning the fact that nothing was done about this and that they never brought a report back to city council, which is what they are instructed by the resolution to do. And Councillor Shannon said to him, well, looking, she's looking down on him very dismissively, well, we are the eyes and ears of council here. She's making the report to us here. Mm -hmm. And yet, <laughs> as was noted in the newspaper and as you see on your tape, when I wanted to ask a question, they said they, that they were running late and wouldn't take any questions. Even though before the meeting started, they said we would have an opportunity to ask questions after the presentation. But when it came to that time, oh, why? They, they didn't want to have to answer my questions, one of which was, if you're so busy, you hired somebody to do this, somebody who, by the way, was on that committee, 
somebody who started out asking the hard questions, but soon went silent and then collected a job with the city and a $3,000 grant. Lee, it was so painful to, to watch that committee meeting and how it, it was like it was in slow motion, racism mm -hmm. at, at play. And it was so subtle yeah. and smooth, very smoothly done, yeah. very professionally done yeah. by people who have been doing it for decades yeah. and who are in power in this city. Yeah. So it, it's deeply disturbing to people. And there were hundreds of people who came out uh, about mm. the mural and about how uh, they had been awakened yeah. by the off the wall coalition uh, and action in 2017. That was in October 2017. It was on the first um, Indigenous Peoples Day, which had been replaced in Vermont by uh, from Columbus Day. And uh, it, it's, so de it's so deeply disturbing, and I'm so, uh, so glad that you're here to clarify things for yeah. us. So. Margaret, I, I saw that. I was sitting right behind um, Councillor Shannon and Councillor Diang. The way the room was set up when we came in, they were in a semicircle facing the, the um, screen where there was going to be a presentation, and we were behind them. Mm -hmm. And yet the first thing on the agenda was for citizens to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and they, we had to get up from our chairs and walk around in front. Uh, anyway, um, Councillor Jiang and Shannon were as far from me as you are, as close to me as mm -hmm. you are. And at one point when Ali was raising the question of the unseemliness of city departments just ignoring a city council resolution, she turned and she looked down on him and said, now, Councillor Dang, we're going to move forward. Mm. You know, <laughs> lessons learned, nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely what you said is true. No lessons learned from this. Let's move forward. We screwed up. We did r the wrong thing. Let, but let's not talk about it. Let's not admit it. Let's not apologize. Let's not agree to take a second look at this, which I think you're going to speak about. It calls for a second look. The task force was given incomplete information. They made the wrong decision. City Council used that task force to give them an excuse to do what they wanted to do in the first place, which the city attorney and the Burlington City Arts heavy-handed running of the mural task force delivered. And meanwhile, the resolution called for the mural to be taken down by, by 2022. However, they don't need to wait until 2022 to do it. No. They can do it right now. Right. And, and what are we asking for it now? What are we asking the, the city council to do? Well, I mean, if they follow their own chronology, they're a year late now on delivering the very simplest part of it, which was redoing the plaque. And the reason of redoing the plaque is because it's, it's not true. It's, it, it makes claims for this mural that are not true. This mural, somebody was hired to paint the faces of people who donated money. An art student, a recent art graduate, did almost all of the work, which she attested to, before the mural task force. The person they hired was told who to paint, how much space to give them. And when it came to adding the mayor's family, he did not want to do that. They forced him to do it. And it was testified before the mural task force that it delayed the completion of the, of the mural by a month or two because they had to repaint four panels. I mean, if they, if they can't do the simplest thing on time of producing a report that they were required to make, they're a year late in that, they're nine months late in that, um, there's no way they're going to get that mural out of there on time as the resolution calls for. Right. This resolution has already been violated. The city council needs to take this up again. The mural, which many people don't realize, is on 64 pa plywood panels that are screwed into the wall. They can be unscrewed, stored back in the warehouse that it came from, while the city contemplates its 
final resting place. The artist was never told that his artwork would be in that space. That was never promised to him. The person on the, who owns the building never granted an easement. He did to the previous muralist whose work was covered up, who also has Vara rights. Big deal about the, the mural artist Vara rights. Oh, we're going to, there he has rights and there was a lawsuit once and mm. the city will violate his rights, his rights, mm -hmm. her rights. Could you explain what Vera rights are? What is, is visual for? artist, visual artist rights act. Okay. And, and it comes, uh, the, the famous case was in New York City where graffiti artist had painted the side of a building. The owner of the building whitewashed the building. In other words, covered up their mm -hmm. art, which is what that Hardy mural, that parade mural covers up Gina Carrera's art. And he was sued by the artists. I think it was 16 million. Mm. It was a huge win for the artist. For the original artists, Gina Carrera has artist rights. Mm. And is her mural uh, visible? Oh what? yes, oh. oh yes. In fact, right now with the tarp, where the tarp is, if you just look underneath that bottom tarp, there's her name in letters this high, mm. Carrera. Her, okay. her artist, her mural was the Rainforest mural, and kids loved it. Kids loved it because it was animal families. Mm. All, you know, animal families from all over the world. So all we're asking is artistic justice. Here. Yeah. Unveil Carrera's mural. Yes. Put, put this Everyone Loves a Parade mural in storage. Yes. Until, as you say, they decide what to do with it. Yes. Add to that, Lee, and we'll, we'll call it a show. Add. Add to that, add to what I just said. Oh, and, well, yeah. um, Gina Carrera's mural is, of course, now faded. And in the uh, a contract, which was never signed, they never had a signed contract with, with the parade artist, never. Yeah. But the, uh, but the, contract they produced after the fact, which is unsigned, it refers to the fact that a mural needs to be updated, it needs to be, um, colors need to be brought up. Maybe every five years there will have to be some touch-up done. Gina Carrera was never given that privilege, and she would accept it now. I believe that she would. She is an accomplished muralist. She's won awards. Awards that she has won for artwork in this city hang in the office of the Church Street Marketplace. She's an accomplished artist. And um, she, I believe, would be happy to update um, her mural. And Lee, do you think that there is a chance, as for your final statement here, is there a chance for the city of Burlington to regain its, its prestige here or to, to show a better face sure. to the public? Sure. Nothing could do it quicker than for them to admit that they made a mistake, admit that they want to remove the mural and, they, and apologize. I mean, look what Pierre Trudeau just did after he was accused of um, going in brown face with a turban on his head when he was a teacher. How many years ago? I mean, he was a young man. His father was the prime minister of, um, of Canada at that time. And uh, he apologized. He said, I did the wrong thing. I look at it now, my eyes are opened. I see now that I, didn't, that I did the wrong thing. If Burlington did that, they would be cheered mightily. But the mayor was interviewed and was asked about that. And he said in so many words, I don't want to offend, I don't want to rile up people in this community. And the people that he would rile up are people with white supremacist mm -hmm. culture embedded in them. Who else would be angry that an error was corrected? Well, it's in the hands of the City Council, the Burlington City Council, and we are calling on you with this program I'm from Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy, to take that vote and take the mural down. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Terhun, Margaret. for being my wonderful guest. Thank you. Till next time, viewers, thank you for listening and watching. Goodbye for now.